Warning. The following video seeks only to expose you to an unexplainable anomaly among the motorcycle community. Whilst I only wish to educate you with my bewildering and finely tuned vocal verbiage, which is well within my capabilities as an inspiring vlogger, I cannot be held responsible if you decide to liquidate your bank account after watching this video and enter the darker side of motorcycling. Best of luck to you. Welcome one, welcome all to the House of the Goon. Today's video we will be talking about the one motorcycle that every rider loves, or the one motorcycle that no rider hates, whichever way you'd like to look at it. Now before we start, let me give a special thank you to all my current subscribers to this channel. I thank you for your continued support. It really does mean a lot to me. If you're not a current subscriber, I hope you take the time to become one so we can share this moto journey together. Let's begin. I've been lucky enough to ride almost every type of motorcycle that's ever been made. And in my 46 years of riding, I've owned almost every type of motorcycle that's been made. I've had the privilege of hanging out with Harley guys, sport bike guys, Moto X bros, ADV riders, ATV desert rats, freestylers, and road racers. One thing that I've noticed is that riders are very loyal to their riding culture. When they get an opportunity to sample a different bike from a different background, they're often close-minded to it. Normally when a cruiser rider gets on a dirt bike, they hate it. When an MXer or dual sporter gets on a sport touring bike, they hate it. And when an ADV rider is too far away from a Starbucks, they hate it. However, I've noticed that there's one type of motorcycle that's so universally loved that if anyone ever rides one, it's like Moto Heaven has opened its pearly gates and paved a golden road to internal happiness. And that bike is a super moto. Now, if you happen to be new to motorcycling or somehow you've been stranded on a deserted island for two decades and you don't know what a supermoto is, it's basically a dirt bike with street bike tires. And that is what I'm talking about today. Dirt bikes with street bike tires. I mean, the concept itself is just badass. It's like the vehicular version of a Minotaur, but more on that later. Also, I do not consider things like the Ducati Hyper Motard or Scrambler with slicks to be a supermoto. Yes, those bikes are awesome. They're very capable and super sexy. But today, remember, we're gonna be talking about just dirt bikes with street bike tires. Let's not complicate this. So here's the deal. I have never met anyone who has ridden a supermoto and not returned in laughter. In fact, if you are depressed, psychotic, unbalanced, or find yourself wallowing in self-pity throughout your life, I recommend that you buy a supermoto instead of visiting a shrink. So because supermotos are such awesome motorcycles, I'm gonna spend the first part of this video telling you why they're so much fun and why you probably should own one if you don't already, which will lead us into part two, which will discuss if supermoto bikes are so awesome, then how come our roads are not currently inundated with supermoto bikes? Now maybe this question is just one of those questions that cannot be answered, like an unsolved mystery of life. Like, why are we still using daylight savings time? Or how come we can't visit the aliens locked up in Area 51? Or which one of those bodies in a barrel surfacing in the drought-stricken Lake Mead is Jimmy Hoffa? And where is our clear, unabated photo of Sasquatch? I mean, some things in life just can't be answered. So we'll begin by discussing the power. As Shakespeare once said, though she be small, she be fierce. And those supermoto bikes look small, they are very fierce in the power department. To put their power into perspective, a normal supermoto bike may be weighing somewhere around 250 to 300 pounds and can push anywhere from about 45 upwards of 70 horsepower. Now that puts you at a power to weight ratio of four to one. Now to put that into perspective, a Yamaha R1 Superbike has a power to weight ratio of 2.4 to one, and a Formula One car has a power to weight ratio of 3.8 to one. So supermoto bikes are no joke. They are surprisingly fast and fierce. Another thing that makes supermotos so fun is their nimbleness. Because a supermoto bike is so light and it's based on a dirt bike chassis, it's very nimble. And it takes far less effort to get it to maneuver where you want it to go. It's as if the handlebars are connected to your brain stem and it knows exactly what you want to do. Now when you combine that nimbleness with the ridiculous power to weight ratio, along with the grip of street based tires, you'll realize that you're no longer riding a motorcycle, but you are riding a weapon. And I'm sure you've seen the many YouTube videos of supermotos schooling $40,000 plus superbikes in the canyons. Now another reason why supermoto bikes bring joy to a sorrowed life is because of their chassis. Because the chassis is based on a dirt bike, it's a go anywhere, do anything type of motorcycle. It can go off road, on road, up and down staircases, jump off of loading docks, do wheelies, do stoppies, do burnouts. You can slide it, you can whip them, and you can fit them in hotel rooms. The possibilities for supermotos are endless. 
And because the bike is so capable power-wise and the chassis inspires so much confidence, it will make you a braver, bolder, and better rider. It will inspire you to do all of the above Gunigan acts every time you sit on the bike. And I think subconsciously when someone rides a supermoto bike for the first time, their world opens up and they start to imagine the possibilities of how this bike will change their lives for the better. And another reason why I think supermoto bikes are so beloved with such a strong cult-like culture is because compared to other motorcycles, they are cheap. A new supermoto bike fresh off the dealership floor can be had for as low as $6,000 and as much as $12,000. But you can find many bulletproof DRZs or KLXs out there for a few grand or less. Now insurance on these bikes is relatively cheap because most of the bike is made from plastic so replacement parts are inexpensive and they're easy to replace. So that won't stress you out if you happen to drop the bike or you won't worry about scuffing it up if you're a newer rider. Also, single cylinder engines are very easy to work on. So if you're a mechanical novice, you shouldn't struggle too much to do basic maintenance on a supermoto bike. So I'm sure I left a few things out there, so feel free to put your comments down below and let me know why you think supermoto bikes are so badass. So this brings me to question number two. If all of the above is true and they are the greatest motorcycles that have ever been made and everyone loves them when they ride them, why are we not seeing more supermotos on the highways? If you do a traffic search here on YouTube, you'll see that the interest in supermoto bikes and supermoto content rivals that of any other bike segment, but somehow the fun factor of owning a supermoto combined with a high search interest doesn't seem to be enough for more manufacturers to participate. In fact, if you're looking to buy a dedicated street legal supermoto right now, you don't really have that many choices in 2022. You have the leader of the pack by far, which is KTM that makes the 690 SMR, but they also make the Husqvarna 701 and the Gas Gas 700. However, the Gas Gas 700 will not be available in the United States this year. Then after that, you have the Jurassic DRZ 400, an electric supermoto from zero that you can ride for about 14 minutes before the battery dies, and then the ultra budget but ultra slow KLX 300. Now, of course, you have the Hyper Motard from Ducati and the Aprilia Dorsu which in my mind are not really true supermotos. While super sexy bikes and I'd love to own one, they're just too heavy to be considered in my discussion today. Now you do have a few KTM and Husqvarna non-street legal supermotos that you can buy, and I'm sure you have some Chinese Amazon knockoffs out there or something, but as far as brand new supermoto bikes, you really don't have a lot to choose from. In fact, most supermotos that you see on the highway are actually converted dual sports like the CRF 450 RL or something like that. So obviously the financial rewards for manufacturers to build supermotos is just not there. And I think the reason for this is because manufacturers develop their technology and sell production based bikes that they race. If you have ever heard the old adage, win on Sunday, sell on Monday, it's the main goal of every manufacturer. If Marc Marquez wins a MotoGP race in front of 100,000 fans, they're at the dealership on Monday buying Hondas. If Eli Tomac wins Supercross races or Lucas Oil Outdoor Motocross races, people are in the dealerships buying Yamahas on Monday and so on. Now, MXGP, MotoGP, Supercross, and Outdoor Nationals are popular series with dedicated fans. We don't see that same type of dedication in the American-based AMA Supermoto races. There are very little spectators in the stands, and there is very little media coverage on the races. And while the Supermoto scene remains somewhat healthy in Europe with the S1 series, it's a fraction of what it used to be. In fact, more Europeans are watching chess boxing and shin-kicking competitions in Supermoto races. And it's not like Supermoto hasn't had its moments. There was a resurgence of Supermoto racing in 2003, and from 2004 to 2009, it was part of the X Games, but it was never able to maintain the interest of the other action sports like freestyle motocross or skateboarding. As someone who's raced Supermoto during the mid-2000s, I have to tell you, it was the most fun that I've ever had on two wheels. I had more fun racing Supermoto than I ever did with MX competitions or road racing competitions. And now that I have my CRF 450 RL Supermotoed out, I can't wait to go full goon in my local parking lots and hit up some local tracks. And while I may struggle with the lack of supermoto manufacturer participation or why more people aren't riding these bikes or why more people aren't attending supermoto races, 
I guess at the end of the day, I shouldn't give a damn about any of that. Because when I'm riding my supermoto, I could care less what the rest of the world thinks about my bike. All I know is that I'm having the time of my life. And it's probably the same way with you too, right? I mean, there are no TV cameras that are filming our rides and our races. There are no rabid fans that are standing outside of our houses waiting for our autographs. And no one gets up on Monday morning to check out our lap times or see where we finished in our local race race or groundbreaking bike achievements that we may have accomplished. We're just living in our own world, riding for the sake of our sanity and pleasure. So at the end of the day, I guess it doesn't matter what we're riding, it just matters that we are riding. Well, goons and gals, that's just my opinion and I could be wrong. Take care.